back again boys and girls we're back again with another uh, edition of butch on sports simply butch is here and as always thanks for tuning in on a tuesday night yes watching the 1000 episode of smackdown live here man um but i had priorities i'm doing the show as well here so hey uh welcome to butch on sports i'm simply butch and as always thanks for tuning in uh, give you some sports news that you can't get enough of, uh, and maybe you, you know, maybe you got too much of. <laughs> I don't know what to say, but uh, I said it, and we'll do it right now here. Let's just let's do it right now, and um, you know what? I gotta get my little script up here. That's what I'm missing. I'm missing it very much. So I'm, I'm gonna tap my board a little bit here while I. Watching SmackDown Live, and yes, it is. It's up. It's up and running here. So we can get on with the show, boys and girls. I don't have to stall. Matter of fact, let's do it right now. The Lions return from a bye week with a trip to Miami Beach. Or should I say Miami in line to face the Dolphins. Yes, the Dolphins of Miami will be uh, the Lions' opponent on uh, next this upcoming Sunday. We'll mark just the twelfth time in this meeting between these two franchises, dating back to nineteen seventy-three. Yeah, I graduated out of high school. Uh, regular season game. The most recent contest was Detroit defeating Miami twenty to sixteen at Ford Field on November 9th, two thousand and fourteen. That's just a wee bit time ago, but. Lions are getting prepared for that. The day was uh, more or less a day off, but again, they had half a last week off and then some. So they're back in the groove and getting ready to uh, do some playing. Agnew is on the reserve list for the Detroit Lions. Yes, uh, injuries have uh, become of him, and right now it looks like he's going to be out for the season. Agnew, our uh, punter, punt returner. And a special teams man there. And also a cornerback. So the Lions are going to have to make some uh, definite arrangements on that one. Also, Agnew has played some offense. No surprise on that. And did pretty well in those first plays that they put him in. They were talking about the Lions, that is. But again, he's on the injury reserve list. And that means he's practically out for the rest of the season. Detroit Red Wings played last night. They lose to Montreal very, very badly. Their next option and action will be on Thursday when they'll be in Tampa Bay to play on the, the Tampa Bay Lightning there. In the meanwhile, Detroit Red Wings forward Eugenia Swinsnowski, or uh, Swinsniskoff. Swinsniskoff. I'm going to put it that way. Vince Wiss. Nith, boo, boo, boo. Swin Niskoff underwent successful surgery on his right knee today. Uh, the surgery was performed by Dr. Kyle Anderson. Swin Niskoff uh, required uh, uh, a, a crucial ligament reconstruction, and he suspected to miss the season, but officially he'll be out five to six months. Uh, 21 years old, he was placed on the non roster. Uh, Injury reserve list on October 1st after suffering a knee injury in Detroit's preseason final game. A 5-1 victory over the Toronto uh, Maple Leafs. Uh, yes, that was an exhibition game on September 29th at Little Caesars Arena. And 
our career regular season games appeared with uh, the Red Wings with Swinniskoff. Uh, he tallied four points on 19 shots on goal. He averaged nine uh, minutes and 22 seconds of ice time per game that he played in there. So he's going to be missed by the Red Wings that need all the help they can get right now because they haven't won a game this year. And it's only been two weeks, almost two weeks, I should say. But uh, hopefully they get it together quicker than later. Quicker, I hope. Uh, for the 15th consecutive year, the state of Michigan will be recognizing one of the men's ability to overcome obstacles and achieve a lifetime of success when Willie Horton Day will be celebrated on Thursday, this upcoming Thursday, October the 18th. Willie is the fourth person in uh, in Michigan uh, history to be given the day, with the third being Rosa Park. Horton, who served as a special assistant to the Tigers, executive vice president of baseball operations and general manager, Al Lavilla, was he dishonored in 2004 when former Governor Jennifer Granholm signed in the bill number 52,000, which are permanently declared October 18th and each of those particular days of the year, October 18th, I'm talking about, as Willie Horton Day. The legislature chose to recognize the seven-time All-Star for humanitarian efforts in the city of Detroit and in the state of Michigan this date. Of honor also considers that Mr. Horton's birthday, that he is, that is his birthday, by the way, here, boys and girls. Uh, he's the youngest of 21 kids or uh, children. Horton was born on October 18, uh, 1942, in Arnold, Virginia. At the age of nine, Horton's family moved to Detroit, Michigan. By 13, he was turning heads around the baseball scouting world, and on August 6, uh, 1961, he became a member of his hometown team when he signed his first professional contract with the Detroit Tigers after an outstanding career at Detroit Northwestern High School. Did I give you enough information on Willie Horton, boys and girls? So don't forget that. The 18th, which is this Thursday, it'll be Willie Horton Day. By the way, the Detroit Lions have named Jack Yarmo of Gibraltar Carlson High School, the week's eighth recipient of the 2018 Farm Bureau Insurance Michigan High School Football Coach of the Week program. Giamo Morales uh, of, uh, of um, Gibraltar Carton. They defeated the Wyandotte Bears to run their record to 7 and 1. Carson is currently ranked number 8 in Division 3. On Friday, October the 19th, the Marauders would travel to Lincoln Park. They take on the rail splitters. That's near and dear to my heart as well. You know, well, you know, what I'm just saying. In the week nine and final week of football or high school football in the state of Michigan, as they're getting down to the wire uh, in the Down River League, that Jarmo has coached high school football for 26 years. And currently, this is his second year as coach at Gibraltar Carlson. Now, speaking of them, high school football, I just want to let you know, Selection Sunday, this upcoming Sunday, officially turns the page for the regular season in Michigan high school football and all the other good stuff as well that's upcoming to the postseason. And qualifies pairing for the 44th annual MHSAA football playoffs to be announced Yes, this upcoming Sunday at 7 p.m. on Fox Sports Detroit. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. In addition to being available primarily on Fox Sports Detroit channel on cable, the selection show will be also viewed on the Internet through FoxSportsDetroit.com. That's the website, of course. And on your handheld devices and television streaming devices like Roku, and the Fox Sports app. 
I just wanted to let you know you can do that. This election show also kicks off this year's football playoff coverage on Fox, which includes the opening nights of Fox Sports uh, Detroit Plus uh, Prep Zone games for the first four weeks of the tournament. That means you're going to get some live action and also some play-by-play stuff there that you can't get enough of. The website and Fox Sports app and eight-player finals online and delay on Fox Sports Detroit and all eight games of the 11-player finals will be on Fox Sports Detroit or Fox Sports Detroit Plus. It's part of the second football week in Michigan promoting on Fox Sports. But first, week number nine will take place Concluding the football regular season, and there'll be plenty live streaming games for things such as not only football, boys and girls, but boys' soccer districts that are going on as we speak, and also the regular season girls' volleyball action, because they'll be coming up into playoffs as well. <laughs> Yeah. So get a whiff of that, boys and girls. Get a big whiff. And enjoy some goodies that you can't get enough of. It's time for football, playoff style. And like a week ago, I named some teams that are in the playoff. Fox Sports this weekend were named the participants in it. And then we'll go over them as well next week as well. I won't leave you hanging. Uh, Detroit Mercy will hold its battle. A lot of stuff happened on the 18th. And this is another event on the 18th. It'll be media day for Detroit Mercy High School. Uh, not high school, but Detroit Mercy University. Robert Viles, the University of Detroit's Director of Athletics and University of Mercy's head coach, basketball coach, new coach, Mike Davis. And University of Michigan Women's Basketball head coach Bernard Scott and the student athletes, men and women basketball teams, representatives, as well as the Rising and Olympia Entertainment, they're going to be there. Where? And what? And how? Detroit Mercy Basketball Media Day. Again, the head men's and women's basketball coach and all the athletes will be available for the media. Uh, who's going to participate and I preview if they're available because they're not in school or uh, doing some other things here. Uh, it'll be on Thursday. And now begin at 12.15 for the media. And we'll go on out there and see what's going on and have some representative uh, uh, give them talk on uh, how better University of Detroit basketball is going to be. It's been a long time since University of Detroit basketball has been a pedestal. And hopefully Mike Davis, who's been a very successful coach wherever he's been, if it's Indiana or where it has been, can bring University of Detroit Mercy's basketball program to the pedestal. So some good stuff there. And, and be in the NCAA playoffs, which I think the city deserves. So, um, and also, you media people out there, lunch should be served. Uh, have a hot dog or something. I don't know. Uh, it's going to be at Callahan Hall on the campus of University of Mercy on Mac Nichols in Detroit, Michigan. That's on Thursday, boys and girls. Uh, our media people will be out there. We'll try to get some uh, highlights of that particular uh, event that's going to be going on for this upcoming Thursday. Now, I have to get myself together on this because I know this guy, um, I met him personally, and um, <clears throat> it, it pains me to, to have to say this or bring this up today, but, you know, out of respect, Paul Allen, who I've known for a while here, who is the founder and co-founder of Microsoft and also the owner of the Seattle Seahawks, but most importantly, the Portland Trailblazers. Bought the team, 
got a new arena up there called the Rose. It used to be called the Rose Center. But it's called something else now. He is, again, the Portland Trailblazer. And also the Seattle Sounders soccer. He has died from, at 65 from complications from Hoskins lymphoma. His family made the announcement statement Monday through his uh, sister, Jody Allen. My brother was a remarkable individual on every level. While most knew Paul Allen as a technologist and philanthropist, I knew him much more as a loved brother and uncle and an exceptional friend. Paul's family and friends were blessed to experience his wit, warm, and generosity, and deep concern. For the demands of his schedule, there was always time for family and friends, and there was always time uh, of loss and grief for us. And so many of us, we are profoundly grateful for the care and concern he demonstrated every day. Allen announced on October the 1st that he had cancer, had the cancer that he defeated in 2009 had returned. He had begun his treatment. The doctors were very optimistic to see a good result. Uh, Allen had posted on Twitter at that point in time. Appreciation of support and uh, recognizing countless of uh, the fight of the challenge. And Allen created a uh, credit for a saving <coughs> of, some, of some things in his lifetime. He was credited for saving the Seattle Seahawks when the team in 1996 was being threatened to move to Anaheim, California. But this man stepped on in there, bought the Seahawks, and put up the money where the mouth is, getting Century Field a place where the Seattle Seahawks, and one of the more convenient football arenas in the National Football League there. Very beautiful indeed. And, and, and the closeness and, and the design of the building itself makes everyone a 12th man or 12th woman in that organization. The Portland Trailblazers, he took over that team in, in a, at a time where basically uh, they needed a new arena. The Rose Garden is, uh, the new, was the new arena, now named something else, but back in the time it was originally called the Rose Garden was the place of a more modern arenas can picture and capture uh, a, a good scenery type of uh, of, of, of pride and, 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 and for the Portland Trailblazers for, for years, because I lived out in Portland, and 12,666 was the number that you can get in that arena, Memorial Coliseum, that is uh, no more. It's now the Rose Garden, that politely seats over 20,000 people. He's done a lot of other things here, too. We're talking about Mr. Allen. Microsoft was one of his accomplishments of uh, joining in on that regiment there. And also, a lot of, a lot of charitable things that a lot of people don't know too much about, like for instance, the cancer dealings that uh, he's helped many families that uh, had hospitalization, paying off their bills that I know of. Now, I got to personally get to know this guy way back when, in about 2000, and he was a joy to talk to. Matter of fact, he wouldn't stop talking. You know, and at the time, he didn't have to really too much save anything at all because during that time, he was going through uh, cancer, radiation. But he was always a person who, when you talked to him and showed your respect, he gave it to you right back and still wanted to keep on talking. And he will be missed. He's only 65 years of age, which is very young, but he's accomplished so much. And I'm going to miss I'm going to miss Paul Allen. I'm going to miss him very much. So uh, he was one of the class people that I've met on this earth. Uh, Me and my friend, uh, Scott Nation, had a conversation today over the phone. And, you know, sometimes some people in high places, 
I mean, act like jerks and don't want to be those special people that can brighten up people's lives. And it's very much so unfortunate. But Paul Allen was the one who did that and did it quite well. Yeah, I remember when King County was going to sue and block the move. But Allen, he stepped on in there, bought the team, gave him some, uh, some goodies, and purchased the team for $200 million. And there it is. And the rest is history. Paul Allen will be missed at 65 years of age, no longer with us. God bless Carl, Paul Allen. The Red Sox, after a lot of arguing on Instagram and all this other good stuff there, they put their big mouths, I mean, they had their bats where their mouths was. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, they beat up on the Houston Astros this uh, afternoon and this evening, I should say, with an 8-2 to two victory, five runs in the eighth inning. For the Red Sox at the top of the inning. And, uh, get, you know, the the Astros did not recover from that. And the Red Sox at this point in time is leading right now the series 2-1. to one. There'll be more action tomorrow in Houston. I do believe that game will be played at 8 o'clock, if I'm not mistaken. Right now, the Dodgers... And the Brewers are playing. Okay, and if I can get a score on that, that would be cool. That'd be real cool. And let me see what's jumping. Now that, of course, here, I'm just trying to keep everybody happy here. And looking for the score of this particular ordeal. The Brewers and the Los Angeles Dodgers. Los Angeles Dodgers in the second inning is leading that game by a score of one to nothing. With the Dodgers at bat, looking like Turner uh, doing his thing there, making it well. So that's that's all we got to put in it, <laughs> invested in that particular one here. And uh, in, in, that, in that series right now, uh, I do believe the Brewers are leading that series 2-1. to one. Uh, Los Angeles is trying to tie that one up, so uh, we'll, keep a, we'll, we'll keep an edge on that and quite sure we'll talk about that on Thursday. Yes, we will be on Thursday. Yes, Thursday we'll be on. Not Friday, Thursday we'll be on. And we're trying to make our decision whether we'll be on Friday or Saturday. But I do believe if I have anything to do with it, we'll be on on Friday. We'll look at some f football stuff there. I'm going to visit Lincoln Park's game, uh, Carlton and uh, Lincoln Park Rail Splitters. Going to go and check that game on out. Have some fun down there at Lincoln Park. And uh, enjoy. And get back here in time on Friday to do the show. So, we'll be on the air on Thursday as well as Friday. And hopefully, yes, hopefully, you'll be on there with me here. Uh, barring any problems or runs, hits, or errors or stuff like that there, we'll be able to come on, to, come on and give you some show. I tell you, uh, you can check out Butch on Sports. On Facebook, go to Facebook, type in Butcher on Sports, and yes, you can get this fine, fine piece of material here. Also, you can go to Podomatic, go to S I M P L Y B U T C H T O O dot Podomatic dot com. The Game Sports Show dot com. You can go there and get Butcher on Sports. All kind of episodes way back when. I checked it out last night myself. It looks good. And why not go keep going there? Go to the, uh, the game show 
www.popbean.com. Uh, you can go there. The Scott Nation's page on YouTube. Go there. And you can always go to iTunes as well and get put you on sports. And hey, if you're going on Facebook, how about give Butch on Sports a like? It won't cost you nothing. Just click a like here, okay? Hey, I'm out of here, boys and girls, for a Tuesday night. Going to get me some rest and relaxation. And we'll be back on Thursday. Put you on sports. It's a presentation of Oh My Darling Productions.